Hi, recently I bought this plasma flame generator and today I want to show you its performance and also the circuitry and the schematic of the circuitry. So this is a rather expensive piece. I paid approximately 30 euro for this. Uh, you can buy it without power supply or with power supply. I bought it without power supply for 30 euro. If you buy it with power supply, you have to pay more than 50 euro. And there are two times, one is for 10 minutes and one is for 20 minutes. So I bought the cheapest one, the 10 minute one. The other one is 10 euro more expensive. So it comes with two magnifying coil and some wires. And this is the connector. So these two wires I connected myself. So it comes uh, in this box, basically. And there is a card with it. So on the card it says, um, the voltage should be between 36 volts to 48 volt, and the current is 1.5 to 2.5 amps. All right, so I'm going to connect this to my bench power supply, and then we see how the plasma flame will look like. And after that, I will open it and show you the schematic of this. Now you must be careful that this one uh, creates a lot of magnetic field near it and uh, that will really disturb your equipment and especially the wi-fi of your house will be interrupted if you turn this one on near your uh, router and you will see that how it impacts my power supply okay so i have connected the the power supply to the input so this one has a switch on it which you can turn it on and off if the switch is off, right now the switch is off and the power is applied. So you can see that the fan on it starts to rotate. So the fan is actually before the switch. So even if the switch is off, still the fan rotates. And when we turn on the switch, I reduce the voltage, I turn on the switch, a red LED turns on. If you start increasing the voltage at around 15 volts, this one turns on and basically when it turns on a purple light turns on on top of this uh, board and you can see that my power supply is messed up so if I try to turn it on right now it turns on it produces very tiny flame because the voltage is not sufficiently high I increase the voltage a bit and the flame starts maybe I should make the the area dark a bit so that you can see basically this is the flame that we have i turn off the lights and after a few tens of seconds when it's on then you can see that the breakout point will get very hot and it start to become red the current drawing from my power supply is approximately two amps at this moment i applied 30 volts because this power supply has maximum 30 volts. Now it disturbs the, the measurement of the power supply and it starts to fluctuate, but this one can maximum deliver 30 volts. On the card, it's mentioned that we should have uh, 36 to 48 volts. On the oscilloscope, you can see that we can measure the, the field. Oh, it changes. So here is basically the waveform. And the waveform on the oscilloscope is shown that it's approximately 15.4 megahertz. I'm going to separate this coil. This one gets really hot. So the material of this is, uh, is some heat resistant material. When it is on, you never want to approach anything near to this coil because it will spark and will melt the, the captain tape that is placed on top of it. This uh, coil former or whatever that you call it it's probably made of I don't know mica or some it's not porcelain but it's a strong stuff heat resistant stuff on top of this PCB there is one turn which is connected to a resistor and an LED whenever you apply more than 14 volt more than 15 volts so when the circuit start to oscillate the magnetic field produced in this coil will also induce the voltage on that one turn and basically the blue LED turns on and that is when you know the circuit is oscillating. 
that loop is not connected to anywhere. It's just a separate loop as an indicator that the circuit is oscillating. Okay, so now I will open this and show you the internal structure. You basically open these screws and If you plan to open these, be careful not to change the the coil shape because that will change the the coupling between the two coils and uh, may untune your circuit. So this top coil is connected to the bottom section through these pins. All of these pins on each section they are connected together, so all of them are shorted just to have sufficient amount of um, copper. And here, so you can basically remove it. That comes out, and that one turn which I said, you can maybe see it, the trace of it is on top of this PCB. So this is the so-called maybe primary coil. And then we have the secondary coil, which is here. Maybe I should zoom in a little bit better. Okay, so here is a close-up look. Um, at the top side, this is the primary coil together with that one turn which uh, I explained and this is the main circuitry we have the secondary coil and this is the breakout point where we connect it to the to the magnifying coil all components are SMD the capacitors, resistors we have a zinediode here the fuse is here and the switch and there is a LED, the red LED which indicates the switch is on. So the switch is placed here underneath it and is connected to the heatsink. Maybe we can see the switch. The switch is IRFP. 250 N. Okay, so I will draw the schematic and will show you the schematic of this board. All right, so here's the schematic of this uh, plasma flame generator. The top part, which is this one, is basically the coil, the primary coil and also the track LED and the resistor which is on this PCB. We have the power supply which should be 36 volt to 48 volts, 1.5 to 2.5 amps. In this case I'm going to use a power supply that goes up maximum to 30 volts, that is what I have, but it even works with that voltage. So after the power supply we have two resistors in parallel and then there is this capacitor 100 nanofarad the fan is connected parallel to this capacitor. So even if the switch is off, when you apply the voltage, the fan will start to rotate. If we apply higher voltage, then we are going to dump more power into this circuit. And of course the, turn, the MOSFET will heat up more, but at the same time, we also have higher voltage on, the, on this part of the circuit, so the fan will rotate faster. And basically we will have more heat generation but at the same time we will also get more cooling so this is a good design there is this fuse 250 volts 5 amps which is in the way of the primary coil um, when you turn on the switch basically this part of the circuit is a resistor and a red led so that one turns on and basically by turning on the switch we supply power to the to the gate of this mosfet this zenith diode fix the voltage at 12 volts and basically here we have a voltage divider and a potentiometer um, to feed the, the gate of this MOSFET. The potentiometer is set at 256 ohm and the total value is 3.25 kilo ohm. So this is the secondary coil which is here and I measured it is 2.2 microhenry. The primary coil is 
545 micro Henry, this one. I measured both of them at 100 kilohertz, so these are the values. These two obviously they have some coupling. Maybe the coupling factor is, I don't know, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, whatever that coupling factor is. But basically that is needed so that this oscillator circuit can work. Now here we have a capacitance of 75 picofarad. It's actually consists of five small capacitor, each of them 15 picofarad in parallel, totally 75 picofarad. And on this side, we have totally 6.4 nanofarad, which are these series of capacitors. Two of them, they are 2.2 nanofarad, and two of them, they are one nanofarad. So totally we have 6.4 nanofarad. The transistor is IRF P250N. And this is the magnifying coil. It has 25 meter height, 25 meter diameter. It has 65 turns. AWG wire is 27. Total diameter is 0 0.37 millimeter. Conductor diameter is 0 0.36 because that is AWG 27. And probably the insulation is 50 micrometer. Now, when I was desoldering these components to, to properly measure the values, when I put them back, because my soldering iron is not proper, so it's a little bit messed up, but hopefully it will work. But the bigger messed up is this fuse. When I desoldered the fuse, the wire inside the, the fuse detached from the terminals, so basically there's no connection inside this fuse anymore. And at home, I did not have um, this size of fuse, so I had to replace it with an equivalent. This is 250 volts, 5 amps, but it's bigger, so I placed it on the side of this. All right, so that's all for this uh, schematic. So maybe I can put this here so that you can also see. If you want to get a picture of it. Okay, so now I'm going to put this back together and hopefully it will work and I can show you again the flame of this plasma flame generator. Okay, so I put this back together. I will now power it and we'll see whether it works or not. All right, so let us first check whether the fan works or not. Well, okay, so the fan works. That's good. Um, let me, I turn it on. Okay, so the red LED turns on. That is also a good sign. The blue LED also turns on, which is really good. So the oscillation, it's going on. Basically that one turn on top of it, which I explained that it's connected to a resistor and an LED. You can see that if even if you have a separate circuit like this, you can turn it on because then the magnetic field passes through this loop and the voltage will be induced and your LED will turn on. So, okay. So this one works. Now I connect the magnifying coil and see whether that one works or not. Okay, here's the, the coil connected. You go away. Here's the screwdriver. All right, so I turn it on. You again notice that my power supply 
messed up does not turn on okay so the flame starts ah okay so i'm going to make here a little bit dark so that we can see the flame better okay so i turn it on now and we start the flame a tiny arc now it becomes almost a flame so this is really beautiful more or less similar to a candlelight and uh, if you look at my oscilloscope you can actually measure the waveform by preparing your probe like this you can connect the resistor between your probe and the ground of the probe and that will capture the field and you will be able to see the signal the oscillation frequency is approximately 15.4 megahertz and what you notice is that the flame itself is really hot so the breakout point right now it's red hot i think that's all for this video uh, maybe one last point so this circuitry I have shown you and I said that this is an oscillator circuit which uh, creates this 15.5 megahertz 15.4 megahertz here I'm going to model this circuit later on and show you the exact impact of each parameters on this oscillatory circuit and how we can tune this circuit to basically um, achieve uh, zero current switching for this MOSFET to avoid overheating it. This will come later. Alright, that's all for this video. See you next time. Bye!